I'm not crying blood. That is from a black fly bite. In last week's episode, Noah and Matt started their ascent of the much anticipated Senecal River. They started by tracking their boat, but eventually they were pushed into the woods for some very tough slogging. After two challenging days, they still have a lot of work ahead of them to get to the Agunish watershed. Welcome to the land of wild rivers. Today might be the crux of our upriver travel. There's a lot of variables here. Like every time we get to a set, we don't know if it's gonna be a gnarly portage, an easy line. A marked rapid there, a marked rapid there, a marked rapid there. The ideal situation is it's a narrow river, so that means all the water will be tight and there should be a deep water channel and we can track it. Just bundling up all of our loose items with these Titan straps. I got them from Mech, proud sponsor of this expedition. So yeah, you just, they're pretty tough. And you just crank them tight. Throw a couple of these around it. And you can haul it over your shoulder or like throw it on top of a bear barrel or... Usually I'll try and leave a handle exposed and get it balanced so I can carry it like a suitcase. It's my portage guitar. I think we want to find the deep water channel then, if there is one. I'm kind of thinking right, right now. I think there's enough to float the boat. That's good. Man, it's good and deep. Yeah. There's a rock right here. Yeah. If we can get you there, I can climb up with the rope and I can like pull it around. Okay. We're making some great progress up this river. There's not a lot of current, which is great. And it hasn't been too bony that we haven't been able to find a line. So we've been slowly walking our boats up one step at a time. Boys and girls, we are now back in Quebec. So to put into perspective how long that took, it was about five hours of tracking and dragging our boats. But we take that every time over portaging. Not a lot of energy spent, very relaxing. It's hot outside, so it was actually great to be walking and wading through the river. We're now on the final lake system until we do the height of land and over to the Agunish watershed. We are getting close, guys. That's a moose. I, man, I, I could have swore that was a rock. And then the closer we got, it was like, man, that rock looks like a moose, but it didn't move. Yeah. She didn't move the whole time. A little bit curious, like it did stick around and, and watch us for a while. 
một người nị Pleasant surprise here. On the map, the river just narrowed. We didn't know it was going to be a waterfall. All right, guys. It's been a while since I've done some geological chats, and this is a good one. We are literally going through an esker. This entire shoreline is made out of sediment from a glacier, and that's from meltwater flowing underneath the glacier, creating tubes of sediment. And I believe uh, the geomorphological term for this is glacio-lacustrine sediment. I'm gonna fact check that to make sure. It might be different. If it's different, the definition is right here. Boop. Let, let us know in the comments. The other news for you guys is the six kilometers I said we we're gonna paddle uh, quite easily. Turned out we tracked all of it. So it took a little longer to get here, but we're now here and we want to camp near this esker because uh, that's how I get my rocks off as a geologist. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, there looks to be a beach here. We should probably check out, maybe. I think, yeah, I, I like this. It's got that perfect combo of a, of a beach, but a nice flat spot behind for the tent. And we are still on the esker. Let's go. I'm gonna bring some sand back to examine. That last map, there was a lot of variables with those rapids. We thought we'd have uh, a week of hell ahead of us, and it turned out it wasn't that bad. We got through all of that and we made it to the top, so we are feeling pretty good right now. Might be what? Snap a whiskey and some cigars tonight, Noah? Don't tempt me, bud. I'll tempt you. Don't tempt me. I'll tempt you. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was so easy. <laughs> jacked up those black flies man they get you they, do. They, they don't give a crap about you or like where you came from or what your family is they just want blood and they're out here to kill they're just out for blood all the time they're just out here life. for blood we're full of blood so they love us that's all we are to them we're just blood, blood sacks, Here you go, Matt. Thanks, buddy. Ah, 
That's some cowboy coffee. We spent a little more time at camp this morning, just sort of relaxing and decompressing. Yesterday, we probably tracked about 10 kilometers of river. It 100% was not as difficult as portaging, but it's still pretty taxing on your body. But we did line ourselves up very nicely for today and tomorrow. We have a blue line for three kilometers, one more lake, and then our height of land. So today it's gonna to be bouncing through this lake system and hitting some blue lines up at the top, which might also have some uncertainty and uh, line ourselves up for striking distance tomorrow morning for the big height of land crossing. It's gonna be straight at the end there. I think I see it. Yeah, I think that's it. Is that moving water? Yeah, moving water. Oh. Jeez, this looks pretty petered out. Man, there's depth. It's like a foot and a half deep. We're still alive? It's not as bad as I thought. One, two, three. Quite the view. So for lunch today, we have some bannock. And to add some flavor to this, I created bannock bombs. I have a few different types of flavor packs, but this one, a lot of shredded coconut, cranberry, and chia seeds. And that adds flavor and also calories. You add your peanut butter and you add your jam, you spread it on top, and then, you know, it's up to the user. You could fold it, you could cut it in half, you could eat it like a pizza, you could eat it like a flatbread panini, whatever you want. But that's that's a lot of weight right there. This is thick stuff. Not much sand in this one. You get any? I had one little kernel. Like I put a lot of effort into not having any sand in that. <laughs> Man, you're cooking on a beach. Look at him. Totally stuck in the peanut butter. It's like the tarpons. Tastes like a chia seed. I wonder if it would make sense to just do that crossing today. See what time we get there. It might. I wouldn't be opposed if we have like a good amount of time left in the day. Just get it done. Just get the suck over with. I have a whole day the next day to just like lay our stuff out and prep and rest and laundry. I, I totally wouldn't be opposed to just doing it today if we have time. I give ourselves four hours. I think that's accurate. No, it'll, be a, it'll be a shitty portage for sure. <clears throat> we definitely don't want to get stuck in the middle of it, that's for sure. Small little muddy creek to the final lake before the height of land. It's a big lake. It's a big lake. How do you pronounce it? Do you want me to try? Give it a go. Yeah, give me a sec. Kaminu Michimeskat, I believe is how it's pronounced. We made it to the lake, boys and girls. Let's go, come on. We're now on this lake. We're feeling good. We're feeling hot and sexy. We have, we're full of bannock. Uh, things are looking good. That away. I'm gonna guess. That is literally the height of land we need to go over. Yeah, it is. This is a big lake. Anything else? I thought I was gonna have more juice to say, but. I kinda of petered out there. I didn't know what else to say other than it was a big lake. But there are loons out here, you know? Like, I wonder what's. 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the momentum would take me through there. You just got into the sentence and then figured it would go somewhere on its own, but it yeah. didn't, eh? That's usually where I go wrong when I talk. Sandpipers are not happy about us being here. No, we're probably standing close to their eggs or something. Yeah, they must have a nest in here somewhere. Behind me here, this is the divide between the last two weeks of travel to the Agunish, the Agunish watershed. We have about 400 meters to a small pond, and then we're gonna do another kilometer hop over to the first lake on the other side. We might try to break this apart, get to the pond today, and then do the big crossing tomorrow morning. There's no escaping this, there's no creeks we can take. It's just gonna be a bog, but we're ready. We've been training for this for two weeks. I think I'm ready to go. It's gonna be hard work, that's for sure. Could be worse walking. Three, two, yep. one. See you on the other side. So I thought I would just sort of skirt the edge of this thing. And I took one step too far. <laughs> just went right in. Uh, I think I can probably get out. I can wiggle my way free. Try and do this without twisting my ankle. There we go. Free. Free at last. Yeah. I couldn't believe how quickly I sank into that. Yeah, man. Don't underestimate the bog. It'll get ya. Lab tea is thick. Still alive? Feeling great. <laughs> we made it to the first pond. Ah! <laughs> Dry pack, where are you? On these portages, we kind of just take the best route. And sometimes that means we're just depositing gear along the shoreline. And sometimes we just need to go pick it up after. Oh, you found one? Yep. Right here. Easter egg. We do GPS it. We're not that silly. See, it would suck to lose one of these bags. They're essentially our lifeline out here. Start our portage down there by that swamp. And then, but instead of going through the swamp, we cut diagonal sort of over this hill. I think it'd be pretty sweet to have a full blown rest day tomorrow with no portaging. We've been chatting as we paddled this lake and originally we were gonna just camp on it, but there doesn't seem to be much camping here. It's about five o'clock and I think we're both pretty eager to get on the next lake and get into the Agonish watershed. So I think we're gonna give her. Oh, there's a path. These moose passages are great when they go in the right direction. Oh, okay, going up. Getting out of the swamp a bit. Just need a quick break here.
Holy smokes guys, we're getting there. We are getting there. over the height of land once again. The maze is officially over. We are now in chapter two, the Agunish. Woo! That was a doozy. Am I still sexy? Oh, baby. Home for the night. I can't believe we got to this lake. All day we were kind of flirting around the idea of crossing the height of land, maybe crossing the first little pond, and we ended up doing it, and we couldn't be more happy. We have that behind us, and tomorrow we're just gonna have a rest day and relax our bones, reflect, and reset our bodies and minds for the second part of this trip, which is the Agunish. The maze section of this trip turned out to be quite difficult. But it was also quite rewarding because it had a, a variety of different things. We had everything from upriver travel, downriver travel, big lakes, uh, you name it. it. Just a lot of stuff that happened. And it was an amazing two weeks so far. And we're really looking forward to doing the second two weeks down the Agunish River. Did you get one? Yeah. There's a piece of lab tea up here somehow. Oh, that's not. That was like a bunch of mosquitoes clumped up <laughs> was together. It really? <laughs> oh, dude. That was a bunch of mosquitoes eating that blood smear. Look at them. Look at them. Just like they're converging. They're, they're colonizing. Oh my god. I thought that was a piece of lab tea. Yeah, you got to send this <laughs> into Nature Is Metal. They're all just feasting. Oh, that's so gross. Just thank God that we have this barrier between us and them for a brief period every night. been flirting with the idea of rain for a couple days and today it looks like it's gonna rain all day but that's all right this is our rest day we set up our tarp we're gonna chill and try to do some organizing with our gear but it is a nice change of pace relaxing and wet compared to grinding and hot so you got to enjoy the differences out here A lot of our clothes got soaked last night. So we're gonna have a drying rack here just to see if we can dry some of those stuff today before packing them up wet tomorrow. I think these are all my cornbreads. You can do your stuff out of the bag. We're halfway done this trip and we have another two weeks until we hit the St. Lawrence. We're now just doing a food inventory to see if we can condense items and see where we're at for the next two weeks worth of food. How's it look? Moisture? Things are getting a little moist. 
Also, we have some moisture issues with the red bag when we nearly flooded the boat on the Eau Claire River over a week and a half ago. So we're just looking at all our stuff, organizing, making sure everything's good. I'm gonna repack it to make it better for the next portages. So when we're packing for a trip, we try to aim for about 3,000 calories a day. And that includes breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. These are some snack packs that I put together for this trip. And it's a combination of a variety of chocolate bars, granola bars, and gummies. And the idea is you get two a day on top of your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You want high calorie chocolate bars. My favorite is the Wonder Bar. Second favorite, O. Henry. I haven't figured out what my third favorite is. Always bring some Cliff Bars as well. A variety of flavors. This is the lowest tier snack you can have. And this is a nature valley. By the end of the trip, this is gonna be a, um, a handful of crumbs. And while you eat this, you wish you had a chocolate bar. Something new to this trip, which we learned from our last big trip, was how important sweets were. A variety pack of Big Feet, watermelon, blue raspberry, and wine gums to get you through the day. You know, when you open a chocolate bar, you kind of have to eat it all. But with this, you can pick on these all day. You can use these as, as ways to get through kilometers on big lakes. Like say, every kilometer you'll have one gummy and savor it until the next kilometer. There's a lot of fun things you can do with a bag of gummies. This is one week's worth of snacks for two people. Who are you? I'm Matt, ba I'm Matty B, Mayfly. Thought I would take you through my first aid kit that I brought for this one. This is just my interpretation of what I felt was necessary for this specific trip. If you're planning a trip for yourself, it's really important you do the same assessment and uh, consult with experts where necessary. Wilderness first aid guide, this piece of foam. The intent is to have this as a, a pad for a splint. Miniaturized first aid kit, a couple little band-aids, some medical tape, and a few Advil. Minor cuts, scrapes, and ailments bag. Different band-aids, pair of scissors, disinfecting wipes. This next bag is for more major trauma, really deep cuts, uh, lacerations, that kind of thing. Nitrile gloves, there's some water treatment tablets in there. Emergency blanket, a few hand warmers, rub A5, 535, <laughs> clotrimazole, polysporin, some hydrocortisone cream, acetaminophen or Tylenol, a bottle of aspirin, ibuprofen or uh, Advil, a small package of Benadryl, a diarrhea relief medication, a couple of packs of Tums, cephalexin, metronidazole, and that's specific for like a stomach bug like Giardia. A regular antibiotic is not going to be effective against Giardia. You need a, uh, a specific uh, type of medication, so that's what this is. You really need to just go through, look at what you're gonna be doing, assess the risks involved to address some of the most likely scenarios that you might face. Stay safe out there. She's coming down. Our undies are getting wet again. Yeah, this has a couple of fundamental issues with it. I feel like there's no, there's no perfect dry bag. When we load these like extremely heavy for these trips, dude, there's like 70 pounds in here and when you pull it out, there's so much pressure. Yeah, I don't know, it's just like every dry bag seems to fail. There's room for lots of improvement with carrying gear in the, in the backcountry. Waterproof, durable, man, it has to be bomb proof. And also, this the belt around your waist. I don't know why it's company- elementary. I don't know, what, like even that NRS bag, the heavy duty, it's got like the skinniest little waist belt. It just like bites into you. Every day we have a coffee ration, and every day we try to only use like 80 or 90% and save a little bit. We've been saving all the extra grounds in one baggie. And this is what is known as bonus coffee. Times like this, you can enjoy a cup of coffee and not feel guilty that you're taking over future day's rations. This is a high risk maneuver, doing it in while it's boiling. 
See? Oh, see? He thought he could get away with it. Dangerous game, Noah. Man, it's like getting bright outside now all of a sudden. This day's been so, like, on off. I'm so it's scared. so flexy. There's it's, so much flex. It's just so big, like, I don't know, it, it's starting to burn on the bottom, though. Alright, do we gotta do then? I'm What's scared. Right? I'm scared, Noah. Ready? Yeah. That's, it could be worse. It could be worse. If you, were, if you were an Olympic judge holding up a sign with a number from one to 10 on it right now, what would I get? On the flip? Yeah, on the flip. Uh, I would give you an 8.5. What would you give me on the burnt cornbread? <laughs> uh, it's just caramelized. It's gonna taste delicious. Yeah. That burnt stuff, you just slather that in peanut butter and it's all good. Getting sand out of there. Yeah, it's gonna be cornmeal peanut butter jam, leftover oatmeal, and sand for lunch. But the sand ratio is a little high right now. Which lake do you think that sand is from? Is it from this one or is that leftover sand from Black Joe or? I don't know, we've been living on beaches every night so it's hard to tell. And one thing you know about a beach is you take it with you for the rest of your life. Yep. This is a slab. It's a hefty piece of cornbread. And I'm just gonna break it up. I kind of like that. I like eating it like a bowl of cereal. Thank you, Matt. You're just going to go plain the whole way? You're going to get some uh, topping on there. What's our rations for peanut butter and, and peanut couple A couple and tablespoons jam. per meal. Per peanut butter and jam? Yeah. Jam, we should probably go a little lighter. Okay. I'll go one tablespoon of this. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! This is one of the best lunches out here. Cornbread, peanut butter jam, little oatmeal and sand. Finally, it's Noah eating in a video and not Matt. Oh yeah. They're eating me. They're eating me, Noah. You can see the storm coming across the lake. Oh, she's coming now! Get under! Get under! Woo! We saw this approaching across the lake. There was no wind for a bit. We are walking around on the beach, then all of a sudden the wind started picking up and this wall of gray started approaching. And instantly, we got hit. Well, it's getting to about nine o'clock now, and the rain and wind has persisted all day. We've been under this tarp for most of it. We spent some time in the tent, just reading and relaxing. We're about to have some soup and then go to bed. It's a good day for rest. You know, this has been the rainiest and windiest day of the trip yet, so it's really nice that it aligned perfectly with our rest day.
Nothing. Nothing. We've been seeing pretty big mayflies around and I tried to match the hatch with the stimulator. It might look like one of those mayflies drying their wings on the, uh, the surface of the water. And I'm hoping at some point I'll be able to entice a nice sized brook trout on the, on the dry fly. But not today. Not today, but we have already lugged these rods for the last 350 kilometers. And this is the first time they're seeing the light. It's one of those things, when the conditions are right, take out the fly, try to get a dry fly bite. What, uh, what, what you doing there, Noah? This is a mustard and parmesan wrap. The ratio is a little more parmesan-y than mustardy, but this is like a little snack. It's some extra stuff we have in the bear barrel. I don't want to jump into our rations, so I'm making these uh, these gourmet wraps. <laughs> How is it? It's not too bad. There's also sand in there too. <laughs> <laughs> A little light. That's all right. You're an enigma, Noah Booth. We did not get far today. We're about six kilometers on the other side of the lake. And we were just farting around, doing some fishing, doing some paddling, checking out bays, islands, beaches. And I think we decided that's as far as we're gonna go today. Might be nice to have a little more relaxing day before starting the next big section of this trip. Matt and I were talking yesterday and we tallied that we've camped on a beach 11 out of 17 times. It's like a beach vacation of the north. Every beach is nice. Every beach has its own characteristics. Some are nicer than others. Sand, particle size has become a big part of our criteria when it comes to a good beach. And depth, the ability to camp off the sand and in the backwoods and be able to have a fire and mess around on the beach. Those are two big things. And length too. It's good to walk the beach too, especially uh, if you need to go do your number, your number two business down on the other side. Life's a beach. I'm just sitting here sniffing lab tea. What would you call that? It's a cross between like lemon. Aloe vera. Yeah, a little bit. Irish spring. Lemongrass. Thyme. Rosemary. I've been thinking about this. <laughs> Have you? Couple of whiskey brulees coming up. The bar is open. I accept tips. All right. What currency of tips? Gummies, chocolate bars, everything except for Nature Valley's really. The measurement is gonna be enough whiskey to cover the gummies. Does that sound like too much? Nope. Is this a fresh bottle? Did we crack this one yet? We must have. Oh. Fresh bottle. Ooh. Been out here 16 days and we've only polished off the one. Less than an ounce a day between the two of us. We save for special occasions. Yes. That seems like enough, eh? <laughs> That's not bad. That's like a double each. Maybe a little splash. Another little splash. Wait on two. Three, four. Yeah, just a little. It's like the umbrella in the drink, right? <laughs> oh yeah. Takes me right back to Lac Brulee. The liquor's in his bones now, boys and girls. <laughs> Look out, anything could happen. Keep him away from the fire. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be snoring and 
15 minutes. I'm gonna sleep right here. I'm gonna get another chapter in, done in this book and be out cold. I like the lab tea touch. Oh, that was nice. I think I'm gonna go like right there. Is that enough flotation for you? Yeah, more than enough. Okay. Oh, this hurts. I'm sorry. My pool noodle is now that much smaller. We get a lot of questions about our whitewater setup, specifically the pool noodle that we put on our paddles. Other than being super cool looking, it actually has a very important purpose. When you're whitewater paddling, if you drop anything, it has a tendency to go downriver without you. These paddles that we use, although they float, it is very hard to see them in the water. And I had an incident earlier on on this trip where we were lining the boat and the line kind of looped around the top of my paddle and flipped it in the water. Luckily we retrieved it, but it was a great reminder how quickly you can lose a paddle. Luckily, Matt was kind enough to cut off half of his pool noodle for my paddle. And what this does is, it just allows you to see something floating in the white water if your paddle's going down river. It's just a different color, it floats up a bit, it's kind of like a bobber. So now both of our paddles, both of our white water paddles, will be outfitted with the pool noodle. We once started with really long pool noodles, but they kind of interfered with your paddling maneuverability. So you just want enough that it'll make your paddle float, but not too much that it affects your paddling. We're gonna see this and we're just gonna think it's a big horse fly. It does kind of look like a horse fly. You you should name your, that's what you should name your paddle, the horse fly, because it bites into the water. An old Glen. We've had two relaxing days resetting our bodies and minds for the next portion of this trip, which is the Agunish River. The Agunish is one of many rivers that drop off Cote Nora to the St. Lawrence, and there's gonna be a steep elevation drop. There's gonna be lots of rapids, and it's about 260 kilometers. Something like this, Matt and I were thinking that it would be great to have a couple friends join us for this. Northern Scavenger, assemble! Yo! Yo! What is good, boys? <laughs>